Hello, I'm Josh Bryant, work for ThyssenKrupp Elevator as a solution architect. My name is Billy Holmes, I'm a solutions architect for Red Hat. And today we're gonna to talk about OpenShift at ThyssenKrupp Elevators and how it's enabled uh, them to achieve some of their business goals and what those positive impacts were on their business. Strange thing about clickers, you have to turn them on before they actually work. So ThyssenKrupp Elevators is a, a quick overview, 50,000 employees, uh, 900 branches in 70 countries, 1.1 million units. Um, and to be honest, some of this information is a little dated, so if, if some of it is inaccurate, Josh will let me know. Um, in the U.S., 8,600 uh, employees, 115 branches, 220,000 units under maintenance, and units are not just elevators, but... Um, Elevators, escalators, moving walks. Right. Uh, 5,000 technicians and 2 billion orders and in intake a year. So they have a relatively large uh, responsibility. Field service organization, 2,500. Uh, again, install base about 22K. Um, they have contractual maintenance. So when they sign up with a, a building or a contractor or a, another company for their elevators, they have certain contractual obligations to maintain those elevators at certain cadence. They have to do them monthly or they have to come out you know, every six months or, or whatever that is. And each contract is unique. Uh, it is specific to the negotiations. Um, and then they also have break fix, right? Which is what happens when you don't plan for something, when a, it, the elevator just doesn't work. Like it, it breaks down for whatever reason. And they have the, you know, how do you get your maintenance crew to the correct places in the best amount of time in order to reach your SLAs and in order to, um, in, in addition, you're injecting unplanned outages into these maintenance plans. So it's all well and good to plan what you're gonna do for the week until something happens. Was it, what was it, a, a famous boxer said, everyone has a plan until you get punched in the face. You know, very similar, right? So they needed to reduce and eliminate missed maintenance, reduce uh, break fix, um, increase their customer service and their efficiencies. Um, their me mechanics total productive time, um, reduce overtime, reduce the missed maintenance, and increase the renewals of their contracts. Because if you can't perform what you've been contracted to do, then no one's going to renew your contract, right? Or it makes renewal difficult when you go back and say, hey, I want you to trusted me again for another year or two and you haven't done what you've been contractually obligated to do, it becomes a very difficult negotiation period. So they wanted to um, uh, clean up their install base, ensure they meet their SLA, ensure resource availability, which is uh, resource availability in this instance meant uh, actual mechanics and actual individuals that were performing the job functions, uh, being able to group locations so that you didn't have people driving unnatural distances to meet uh, the contractual obligations. Uh, so that would require overtime because they're dri driving longer distances in order to reach these locations. Um, and then there's other issues around how do they measure the performance of the mechanics. So it's just based on unit scoring and the service levels and the scheduling and, and trying to balance these routes based on their internal cost model and based on customer satisfaction. So a lot of this future state revolved like I, dipping in to IoT, um, trying to figure out how to um, minimize repairs, how to increase the safety not only of their technicians but of the elevators that they're managing themselves. And, and this is something I didn't know, and I'm not sure if you knew, but two factors that go into uh, uh, an elevator that I didn't know was one, 
that every elevator is unique, that there's no like elevator store that you go to and you buy you know, a 12 by 12 by 12 elevator and get it put in your building. Every elevator is uniquely designed and custom built for each building. And ThyssenKrupp Elevators adopts other elevators that were built by other companies. So even if they did not build that elevator in a building, they can uh, do the maintenance on that elevator if you uh, so require them to. And that is something I did not, th those two things are, I did not know, which kind of also increases the complexity of this problem a little bit, because now I have to train my technicians to not only pr to repair my stuff, right, the stuff that, that I've built and I've created, but as well as, you know, potentially my competitors, people that have, or, or legacy, maybe the company's not around anymore, so you have elevators out there that they did not build, that they still have to support, and as, as we'll learn a little later, these are not just mechanical situations. There's a lot of technology that goes into these elevators that are just not hoisting people up and moving people down. So eventually we worked with TKE to come up with a solution set around a routing uh, program called Off the Planner and our OpenShift product in the, in the cloud. So we have a managed OpenShift product called OpenShift Dedicated, which removed a lot of the operational burden on ThyssenKrupp to manage the environment and allowed them to build a solution set that resolved some of the issues that they were facing of, around how to get their uh, mechanics to the right place at the right time, reducing their costs. And as we'll find out a little later, it actually created other benefits uh, while they, they had on their roadmap as I started to learn about the solution, I've only been with the account for about a, a year, there were other benefits that came because of this effort. So what OptiPlanner does is, this is a particular example, is you take a map of locations of where someone needs to go in a particular week, in this case. It partitions the map into quadrants, and it then, in parallel, determines the best route within that map on how to um, best reach those places, right? It's kind of like the, if you think of a, an autonomous robot who needs to travel from one side of the room to the other with a bunch of Legos in the way or blocks in the way, how does it reach the other side of the room with the least amount of energy or the least amount of time, right? Whatever your metric is of success. And so in this case, they have inputted several rules that describe what success means to ThyssenKrupp. And that might mean SLAs. It might mean uh, risk of contract. It might mean uh, availability of mechanics, right? It might mean um, how much overtime a particular mechanic has already had or, or, what, or how many hours they've already worked in, in the you know, two-week period. So all this data goes into OptiPlanner and it calculates the best route of the fleet that they have to reach these destinations. And then at the end, they merge that data into a larger set. And then at the end, you see we have two, um, you, know, you know, this is simplified, right? But you have two different outcomes. One has a worse score and one has a better score. And so you, you attain a, the most optimal solution. Now, OptiPlanner can run a But long, before that okay, one, if you, think, if you think about it, because before we would give the mechanic 30 days worth of tickets, and we would just say, here you go, here's your workload, go do this for the month. Before we implemented OptiPlanner, that's how they would work. But with the implementation of OptiPlanner and it planning the best route, now we can give the mechanic an achievable schedule every week, so and we, he knows what buildings that he needs to go to, and it's not just, here's a load of work, and this is what you need to do. That's one of the big things that we gained from it. Exactly, and 
the other interesting thing about OptiPlanner is that the longer you let it run, the better outcome it achieves. But it's, called, it's something called diminishing returns. And I like to describe diminishing returns as eating Oreos. The first Oreo is great. The second one's pretty good. The third is all right. And after the hundredth one, you're like, oh, I don't really want an Oreo anymore. It's the same thing with OptiPlanner, where you can get uh, the most optimal route if you let it run to infinity but that might not be the best usage of resources and time. And I think what they found out is they, they've reached a sweet spot and, they, and they're still tweaking it as they, as they run these workloads where at some point you reach a point um, that I can run it for 20 minutes as an example and I save you know, 25 minutes or you know, whatever of time, but if I let it run for 30 minutes then I only save you know, two more minutes you know, of my route, right? So you end up getting diminished returns at some point. So with this project that we've done with ThyssenKrupp, uh, it's been a two-year pilot. It's been live for six months. Um, and some of the immediate business impacts they've seen is their completed maintenance rose from 50% to 75%, and their goal is within 100% within a year, which because of these initial success, they have a lot of confidence that they're going to attain their goal. They've increased their maintenance planning and their scheduling, uh, reduced cancellations. Um, uh, well, I guess here I made a mistake. <laughs> they've, instead of reducing their billing compliance, they've increased their billing compliance and they've met their SLAs. Uh, reduced the number of devices that the mechanics had to carry. The device, the, how many devices were the mechanics carrying for? They were having to carry four before, and now they're down to just their tablet and their mobile device. Right. So not only is it you know, increased cost savings from having to purchase more mobile devices, it's a less of a burden on the actual mechanics themselves because there's less devices they're having to keep track of and having to update and having to um, do all that stuff. Also, the reduced CapEx costs um, by reducing, um, by utilizing the cloud, they're using our managed, Red Hat's managed offering. Um, the, uh, they can also see the availability and the mechanic over, all of, uh, over allocation. So they can see um, how their mechanics are able to achieve their goals. Whereas I think before, um, like Josh said, they would have this 30 day window of here's all this stuff you have to do. And what was happening is not only were there a lot of overtime, but there was a lot of um, you know, so I guess each mechanic is measured on some key performance indicators, and that determines whether you know, they're still employed or they get bonuses or they get you know, you know, promotions and you know, uh, raises and all this stuff. And it was very difficult for them to achieve these, these, uh, their goals because you had this huge lump of work that had to be done in a set amount of time. So this allowed more visibility in how they were attaining these goals and it allowed them to, uh, ThyssenKrupp, to create schedules that help them achieve their goals. Uh, about 8,000 uh, 8, mechanics and technicians are using this daily. Um, so from a, this is what I call like non-measurable impacts, like uh, I don't have like metric information on this, but it was, um, these are definitely still impacts for the business. So it eliminated skill gaps from their infrastructure. So they don't have, to have as much knowledge in their internal company IT in order to manage these servers, in order to manage the network, in order to manage the SLA, in order to manage you know, outages. We, we have a th um, three uh, regions of availability. Uh, we are load balancing across them all. So if something happens in one, it'll you know, move it to the other regions. Uh, they can also handle most of the issues on site. So they can pull up their tablet and they can see you know, uh, look a video or how the, the default code, so they can tell what the what the elevator is doing, and so now they can do more preventative maintenance. Whereas we've we've been reactive in the past, and with this now we're more preventative than we are reactive. And a lot of this comes into their machine learning. Uh, they call it Max, uh, integrated with the mobile technology, allows better for source uh, on site using a database of the default codes. So not only can they, as they're there, it could is using this analytics in the back end to determine, okay, you've had you know, so many calls at this site or you've, you're about to go to this 
break fix situation. Here's the historic data on this. Here's some analytical in inference that we can make from this. These are some tickets that are similar. So it gives the technicians more tools so they can resolve the issues better. And when the technician is on site and is able to uh, gain access to information to help them solve the issue uh, while they're there, it means you don't have to call a technician back again the next day or the next week with more information because they didn't have to go back uh, and research. They had it all at their fingertips. Um, and then uh, security was also uh, for the whole solution set. They wanted to make sure that, that everything was secure and using our single sign-on solution. Uh, and they wanted to have a partner, I believe, uh, so that they weren't just doing it by themselves. Yeah, because, I mean, that was one thing that we looked for. We, we, we were trying to move things more off-prem, and we wanted something in a managed environment. And the partnership fit well. You guys had everything that we needed, plus you had the expertise with the consulting side of us to help us uh, bridge that skill gap that we didn't have in the beginning. And now, I mean, as you've seen from the slides, I mean, we've, we've gained tremendous performance improvements based on the applications. So we got like two minutes left, um, maybe a little more. Is Anyone have any questions for us or want us to deep, deep dive into something if we can? If not, Josh is going to tell a joke. <laughs> so three people walk to a bar. No. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Yeah, so that's what we got. So I hope that was interesting for you guys. Thank you.